China has the highest, they have the best transmission lines in terms of the highest voltage, lowest loss. They tr transport electricity, electricity over 2,000 kilometers and they lose only 7% of the energy. If we transmitted over 200 kilometers, we would lose more than that, okay? Uh, and, and the drop is exponential. So if you're at that distance, you, you might get a trickle, you might get 10% out of our current highest voltage power lines in the United States. We need to transmit renewable energy over long distances. The Midwest is the best place for, for solar. The southwestern deserts are the best place for solar. The Midwest is the best place for wind. We should be transmitting that across the United States. If you have lots of generation in many areas, it's a higher probability the sun is shining, the wind is blowing. So, Steve, analyze a little for us. I mean, you spent a lot of time in China talking to officials and being in the world of science. How do you view the differences between the way China goes about focusing on a problem like this and how the United States goes about focusing on it? And how do the two systems respond in different ways to this challenge? Well, um, first, um, and China doesn't have open elections. We do. <laughs> that can, makes a big difference uh, for a number of reasons. Um, China has many engineers in the high government. Uh, I was the first scientist cabinet member in the history of the United States. You know, I feel like I'm the Jackie Robinson of nerds. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so in any case, um, uh, there, there are differences. Uh, because you're not worried about elections and, and then less susceptible, and oh, the biggest uh, companies are actually part owned by the Chinese government. And so in the United States, uh, most of our energy, virtually all of it is uh, private sector. And so if you have something like uh, the very real risks of climate change, uh, which means you have to start to evolve away from fossil, decarbonize our energy, um, this makes uh, a number of fossil companies worry that uh, going into the future, they don't have to worry for 10 or 20, 30 years, but they really should be worried over 50 year, 100 year time scale. Um, and uh, because of that, they, they can uh, put a lot of pressure on Congress. And um, it's different in China because their government has to, in the end, look out for what's best for their country, for their entire people, not a particular industry. And uh, they've come down very hard that the combination of the local pollution due to energy production and transportation uh, plus the climate change threats to their water supplies, to many, many things, um, have convinced them that it's uh, worth the price. But as I said, the price is a lot less than we thought even five years ago. And in the next five or 10 years, it's going to the low cost option. That's the most astounding thing, but it's the low cost option that requires more coordination. And, and is that something that can be done at the state level and in our country, does it require national leadership to do that? Uh, it has to require state leadership and it's actually, the leadership actually is in the regulators and in the uh, utility companies, the distribution companies. Uh, there is no federal jurisdiction. As Secretary of Energy, I could not order people to do X, Y, and Z in the transmission distribution system. Um, you know, it's a lesson uh, in my career. The next time anyone asks me to do something like this, I'll say, uh, only if I'm emperor of energy. <laughs> <laughs> President of the United States wouldn't even be good enough. <laughs>